The holidays are a festive time of year, a time for giving. But today in Jupiter, Florida, nothing will be given away. Victory will need to be earned at the Bolero Elite Series. Anchoring the broadcast are two Hall of Famers, football's Jerome Bettis and bowling's Norm Duke. We have returned to the spotlight for the first Bolero Elite Series champion, Luis Gonzalez, as he squares off against fellow amateur Garrett Chauvin. And a marquee matchup between Hall of Famer Tommy Jones and the best bowler in the world, Jason Belmonte. But only one man will win the $100,000 grand prize and capture this prestigious title. Oh my! Oh, yes. Clutch! Yes, he did. Clutch Gonzalez. $270,000 richer. He's striking no matter what they and got out that's there. That's the kind of delivery that's going to knock over 20 pins. Yeah, had it on lock tonight. Anthony Simonson gets it done. NBC Sports is proud to bring you coverage of the third and final Polaro Elite Series for 2019 as we welcome you to the Sunshine State. This is Bolero Jupiter. Hello everyone and happy holidays. Todd Harris with you alongside two Hall of Famers. Of course, the PBA Hall of Famer, Norm Duke, and the NFL Hall of Famer, the bus, Jerome Bettis. We welcome you to the Bolero Elite Series and this is a great program. Eight pros, eight amateurs, they work their way down to be the last one standing. If you win the tournament, you get $100,000. The runner-up takes $25,000. So a big payout either way for the pros and the amateurs. All right, we'll start off talking about the amateurs, guys. It'll be the second match of the day. We've got Luis Gonzalez taking on Garrett Chauvin Bus. In Chicago, we saw Luis Gonzalez. This guy can flat out play. He can play, and if there was ever a thought uh, that an amateur couldn't beat a pro, he tore that out. Uh, the first uh, series event, and he's a left-hander. He knows how to throw. He's been bowling since he was three years old, and he's going to be formidable as a great left-hander here. And how about Chauvin? What do you think? Well, also a left-hander, and you know he bowled in, co uh, in college at Saginaw Valley State University near your hometown. Yeah, my hometown. Yeah. Hey, more importantly, I was over here working out with him this morning. He seemed to be the coolest of the four players. And in this event, you better be cool when it comes down to the pressure-packed endings. All right, we started off with eight amateurs. We have made the field all the way down to two. Let's find out how they got this far. First round, and the bowling Amy. I mean, I go into every match just thinking it's, it's another opponent, it's 10 frames, anything can happen in one game. Go out there, make the 10 best shots you can, and hopefully you come over with the win. The key for me for that match was just to stay calm and just slow down with my tempo. At the end of the day, it's your control of your shot. You gotta do what you have to do to make that shot to the best of your ability. The second match was, it was more, it was pretty intense. There was a time where I was down 12 or 13 pins, I believe. In the eighth and ninth frame, I knew if I was able to get a double in there, it would put a little bit more pressure on him and I think that was the key to the match. It was a very intense match. It was a match that you would want to see at the tournament going down to the final ball. In round one, I faced Mike Ewing. I could tell we were both a little bit nervous. Um, I mean, you know, big, huge opportunity, stage we've never been on. We just kind of grinded those first six frames, really. And finally, I put a four-bagger together, and that was really when I started to feel, OK, let's do this. I advanced um, and went on to bowl Dougie uh, Heron, uh, Dougie Vision, as he's known. He, he has a big personality, and he was uh, he was trying to razz me a little bit. But uh, I, I made sure to try and shut that out. I, I threw two really good shots on the eighth and ninth frame. That was what gave me the win. All right, let's take a look at the brackets, and then there were two, and it should be a great one. Garrett Chauvin taking on Luis Gonzalez. That will be coming up shortly as we turn our attention to our first match of the night, the pros, and that is Tommy Jones taking on Jason Belmonte. Now, these are both fantastic bowlers. Norm, you know them well. Who do you give the edge to in this one? Yeah, two of the world's best. And, uh, you know, you got to give the edge to the number one player in the world, Jason Belmonte, who's had the best year. I think that if, if if Tommy Jones gets on a roll, he's got a chance. Yep. But if he doesn't, Belmo. 
you know, the beautiful thing about when these guys are, are pros, both of these guys are established veterans, right? So now it's just about who's the hotter guy going in, who gets, who finds his spot, who gets on a roll, and who finishes the other guy off. And let's not forget, $100,000 is on the line. Right now, let's find out how Tommy Jones got this far. The first round I bowled Shane O'Keefe, she was a little, uh, a little rusty because she'd been on vacation for the last 10 days. Shannon made a pretty good shot in the eighth frame. She left a 10 pin, and then she missed it. An unfortunate mistake on her part. And uh, when she did, then I pretty much just needed a couple marks to finish out the game and to advance to the next round. Old Marshall Kent in the uh, semifinal of the pro side. Uh, he had a couple bad breaks. He, you know, four nine to early. The lanes kind of transitioned a little differently than they did earlier in the in the first match. I don't know if it was a different pair or what. He changed balls. Uh, I moved around a lot more that match than I did the first match. It's kind of a game of chess. Uh, fortunate enough to strike in the ninth and strike in the tenth, so then it was uh, it was all said and done. So Tommy Jones, the first semifinalist here in the pro division. For the official introductions, let's check in with Mark Fratto. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Bolero here in Jupiter, Florida. It's now time to meet the pros. First up, an all-time top 50 PBA bowler and a recent electee into the PBA Hall of Fame from Simpsonville, South Carolina, Tommy Jones! Tommy Jones, extremely talented, especially tonight. He will be looking for $100,000, but he will have his hands full with the number one bowler in the world. They call him Belmo, Jason Belmonte. I don't like watching someone else determine my fate. In both of my matches, that's what happened. So in the first round, I played against Anthony Simonson and got off to a really good start. Anthony got off to a bit of a slow start with a split in the second frame. Even though he, he split early, I knew I, I was going to be pushed. He did strike all the way out until the 10th, and I knew that I don't want to give him an opportunity, so I was going to make two really good shots in the 10th frame. First one was great, and then the 11th frame, I left a split, which gave an opening to Anthony. And unfortunately for him, you know, he got the first strike, couldn't get the second one, and I advanced through. In the second round, I played uh, Carl Troop, and it was quite the opposite. I started a little slow, and Carl started really hot with three or four, even five in a row, I think. And then it came down again to the 10th frame, where I knew if I get the first strike in the 10th, a spare would be all I would need in the 11th frame to win. I left a stubborn seven pin, made it, and then the field shot was critical. If I strike here, I couldn't lose. I could only force a tie if Kyle was to get all three in the 10th. And then I think the 12th shot for him was similar to my shot against Anthony. And I could see, you know, three quarters of the way down that it wasn't going to hit the pocket. Then I just had the hope that one pin stood, and it did, and then I went through. So that's how Jason Balmani made it to the semifinals. But what is he going to wear? Last time we saw him, he was on the broadcast with us, rocking a three-piece and a tie. So what does Belmo have in store? Well, he tried on a jacket, didn't like it, handed it over to Kyle Troop. And we are waiting for the big reveal. We now check in again with Mark Fratto. And now, a four-time ESPY winner, five-time PBA Player of the Year. He qualified for the semis with a 247 and a one-pin victory from Orange, Australia, Jason Belmonte. the professional bracket, Jason Belmonte and Tommy Jones have worked their way down. One of them is moving on to the final and an opportunity for $100,000. So $100,000 goes to the winner, $25,000 goes to the runner-up. So not a bad payday if you make it into the final. A lot of pressure as the two pros step up and we are ready to go. Tommy Jones will be the first, and we'll see what the two-time PBA major title winner can do here in Jupiter. Not a bad way 
to start out. So we've got <laughs> contrasting styles here, Norm. We've got the single thrower and the two-handed thrower. So we're going to have your work cut out for you. You and Jerome are going to have to break this down and pick out the flaws. <laughs> right now, there's no flaws. It's one for one. <laughs> No, these guys are ultimate pros, so you're not going to see many flaws at all. And a nice start for the five-time PBA Player of the Year, Jason Belmonte. Belmonte from New South Wales, a town called Orange. Talked to him just moments ago, and he's excited to get back home to see his family, his kids, Aria, Hugo, and Sylvie. You might think that the first shot you throw on television is the hardest. It's always been the second shot for me. Just so you know, these are the two shots I'm most interested in. We talk wow. about the velocity he throws out for a power bowler like you. You can appreciate what he's doing out there. I can ap appreciate that. You know, the velocity he puts on that ball and that the, the, ro the revolutions, the rotation, right. I mean, it's uh, it's pretty impressive to see. And once he gets going, it's going to be hard uh, to get him off his spot. Now, the left lane versus the right lane, that's the question mark. I, uh, will they see the difference in the two early? Oh, they will see it, but they've already seen it and made their adjustments, and I think both of them are lined up. It's just about making shots right now, keeping yourself together. Yeah. Tommy Jones seems to be right in the same <laughs> pocket, the 41-year-old from Simpsonville, South Carolina. Wow, that was a beautiful shot. Yeah, it's about as good as you can get right here for TJ. He knows it's yeah. he knows it's right in the pocket. Like right a where he wants like to a be. Steph Curry three, doesn't even wait for it to go through the basket. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, in his mind, he thinks he needs every one of them because he's bowling against Belmonte. I'll tell you what, the boys, they are feeling it today. That's as good as it gets. It's setting up for a very good event. Still to come here in Jupiter, Florida, the Bolero Elite Series, we got the battle at the arcade with your guide, Kyle Troop. And then we'll answer the big question, where's the beef? Drome's got some experience with that burger. And of the main course, it's the Duke taking on the bus. Who will reign supreme in the Sunshine State? We'll have that when we return. You know, the biggest moment in my career that I look towards is when I broke the record with the 11th major. And that moment realizing I have accomplished one of the hardest things to do, is, which is win a major championship more than anyone else in the history of our game. And that really took me back and it was very emotional. Getting inducted in the Hall of Fame is uh, something you dream of and you live for. Um, it's kind of like one of those things you, you kind of expect the call to come, but it, you don't really know, so it's kind of surreal at the moment. On the broadcast team, I enjoyed, you know, calling the action, but I tell you, uh, I never, ever want to broadcast when I have an opportunity to bowl. My body's healthy again. My goal is to get back to being one of the best bowlers in the world. And uh, my goal's always been to get to at least 25 titles. So we got 19, so that's the goal. And now that we're back full-time on tour, thanks to Bolero Corporation, it's, uh, it's an awesome feat and looking forward to it. You know, now that I'm here, I have an opportunity to bowl on the, the BES TV show. I'm gonna make sure that I take every opportunity that comes my way. Otherwise, you know, next time I'll be calling the action again and be miserable watching the guys bowl for $100,000. The Bowler Elite Series has provided a lot of money for us to bowl for. You know, 100000 on top. Santa Claus come early with a big bag of cash. That'd be great. And I'd like to take that home and uh, send a big Christmas card to the Bowler Elite Series.
What an amazing story and career for Tommy Jones. This is your last event before you get inducted into the Pro Bowling Hall of Fame. So it's been flawless so far. Is that the kind of game you need to have in order to take on Jason Belmonte? Oh, absolutely. Jason's been one of the best bowlers in the world, or the best bowler in the world, for the last probably five to seven years. So uh, it's going to take a really good game off to a good start. You're going to have to keep it going for the last seven frames. Excellent. Good luck to you, Tommy. Todd? And Tommy Jones, the 2001 PBA Rookie of the Year, off to a great start as Jason Belmonte now steps up. You know, what's amazing to me, Norm, is, is as a pro bowler, you travel. This guy really travels. We're talking from Australia to come up to these, some of these events, and it never seems to face him. The jet lag, it never seems to be an issue for him. No, it always bothered me, and I can't figure out how he can bowl so well on jet <laughs> lag every single week, but he just never seems to falter. How do you place it so well? I mean, Jerome, you've had a 300 before. How do you place it so well consecutively? It's about consistency. You know, this this sport, it's all about consistency. And when you look at them, you know, game after game after game, mm -hmm. they're not going to miss their spot many, many times. Most of the time, it's going to be a reaction uh, to the pins that, that may, you know, give them a nine or, or something like that. But for the most part, they're going to hit their spot every single time. Yeah, their accuracy is much better than most bowlers, but, but their ability to hit it the same every yeah, time every is time. the big thing. You don't want to grab too much or, or mishit it. <laughs> That's what gets you in trouble. Oh! I had to speak about that. I was going to say, the yeah. announcer jinx. So what happened here, Norm? Yeah, he missed this at the bottom of the swing, and once it got wide, it just doesn't have enough to get to pull up to the pocket. And it seems as though that left lane is a little bit different right down now in the uh, in the pin area. It's just it just doesn't doesn't snap as much. Yeah, Jerome, when you and I were playing over there earlier, the left lane was a little more hooking, but because you were standing left, it seemed to wiggle down lane more often. Mm -hmm. And he's got money cleans it up. Yep. Yep. But you can tell he's not happy the way that last frame played out. Yeah. Again, you guys this, talked about it, consistency. This would be a great way to go into the Hall of Fame, beating the number one player in the world right now. It, it makes you feel real good when you go uh, and get inducted. Remember, if he wins this, he will move on to the big final and face the top amateur. And that's where the payout of $100,000 will be on the line. Down early, oh, oh, oh. but when you're that good, yeah. And, and and there's a there's another side of this that I don't think many people under, many people see is that Tommy Jones is going to take take this if he does win this game. Whoever wins, they'll take that win on to the next time they see each other, and that's in the back of their head saying, "Hey, I know I can beat this guy." There is no question about that. <laughs> you know, you you have to get a couple of medals on your on your chest before. That's right. Yeah, you got to rattle these people somehow. That's the answer that you wanted to see. Norm, how hard is it to let go of a bad shot? I, and just from his body language, it looks like Ben was still thinking about that last frame. You get the first one by yourself. Yeah, you know, it's not that hard to let go of it as long as you're in the lead. <laughs> it's real hard to let go of it if you're losing. And he knows who he's up against. Tommy Jones does not like to give it back. Belmo leaves a single soldier standing.
Yeah, this is just protection from the last shot. Went wide, and he said, I have to yeah. get it. I have to catch the fingers. He caught the fingers so much that it overhooked to the right. And, and again, it's that left lane mm. that he's trying to figure out. Yeah, good shot. And Jerome, it's... Belmo picks that up as Tommy Jones seems to be in control when we return to Jupiter, Florida, the Bolero Elite Series. Layla will be with Belmo. Has he dug himself a hole he can't get out of? We'll find out when we return. To be successful in this sport, you need patience. Driven and composed. We have to be persistent and have a love for the sport. You need to work hard and never give up. You must make your spares. You have to have a great support system like my family does for me. You need to be confident. Focused. Dedicated to the sport of bowling. I got to this point by practicing and being in the gym every single day working to be the best athlete that I could be. To be successful in this sport, you need to be bold. 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 You need to be bold. This tournament is brought to you by your nearby Bolero, Bullmore, and AMF Bowling Centers, who remind you that any time is the perfect time to be bold. Bowling, arcade, outrageous eats, and unforgettable events. Go online now and reserve your lane. Back in Jupiter, Florida, we send it down to Layla. Todd, thank you. Jason, a competitive match so far. You know what you're getting in Tommy Jones. What do you think of just what you've done? Yeah, I think I'm going to have to strike out, most likely. I mean, Tommy uh, looks really, really good right now. Um, you know, I didn't throw a great shot there on the left lane for the eight count, but, um, you know, we're halfway through the game. There's plenty of frames left. Uh, i got to hope he gives me an opening, and, and if he does, I've got to try to take advantage of it. We appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck. Todd? So, Belmo telling us exactly what he needs to do, guys. You agree, obviously, it's, it's not going to be easy. No, it's not going to be easy. Uh, you know, you're staring down the barrel uh, of a, a gunslinger, and so you've got to you've got to hope that uh, he makes the mistake uh, that you can take advantage of. Yeah, you got to do. You got to fire back. You, you got to shoot back at him. Tommy Jones now up on the right lane, and this has been good to him. And he leaves one standing. So maybe the opening that Jason Balmani needed. Like yeah, right out of the I mean, commercial break. seems the toughest thing to do for the pros on television is out of the commercial breaks. They have yeah. to manage themselves. Yeah. Sometimes they come down, sometimes. Yes. Yep. And, and you can see he's going he's gonna to alter the, uh, the fit of his thumb. Make it an adjustment. Just that, you yep. know, two-minute break there. Yep. He's got to make an adjustment from something that has been absolutely perfect up until this point. Exactly. So this is a big shot, right, Norm? I mean, rattled there. You got to finish this thing. No problem. No problem now. All but, right. But now the the question mark has started to sink in, right? And so now you're saying to yourself, okay, I've got to get back into it. I've got to find a way to, to get going. And what people don't understand is this game is so psychological at this point. Uh, now this is the challenge. Can he? put it on the lanes, and get it in the pocket. Yeah, I think he's going to do fine here on the left lane. He'll probably get a strike. The big thing is when he gets back up on the right lane, can he double? <laughs> one strike's one thing. Yeah. A double is so huge. Competitive match. We are talking about one pin. He has missed yes, right. one pin this whole match, and we're breaking it down. Say, oh man, he's in trouble. It's like it's one pin. Yeah, that was his ace shot there. Now remember, Belmonte had the same commercial break. Yep. Same amount of time. Yep. Difference is he doesn't have a thumb hole. Okay. Doesn't have Absolutely. to adjust that thumb hole. You see. Mm -hmm. Inside information from Norm Duke, people. Absolutely love that one. Look at that. Wow. Oh. 
just came right just, across the front. Yeah, yeah and, and those are the, the shots that really hurt. When you put it exactly where you wanted to put it, and it didn't work mm -hmm. out. You didn't get the strike that you were looking for. Yeah, good shot. There you go. Yeah. You can see the frustration yeah. uh, on his face. He had an opportunity. Uh, and you saw that pin action, Jerome. Right. I mean, it was like, mm. Yeah, you know, the max scores on both, it's uh, 32 pins, difference in the max scores, but it's only a 22 pin match now. Uh, Tommy Jones has a hammer, Jason Belmonte doesn't, but it's only 22 right now. Bad one. Oh. Norm, you saw that coming right out. I've never seen. <laughs> I've never seen a shot executed like that from Jason Belmonte in my life. Take by the way, it's normally hard to tell whether he throws a good one or a bad one, but this yeah. one I could tell immediately. And you can see he's. Yeah, he's not liking the left lane, is he? Able to figure out the left lane. Yeah. And he's a little, you know. Well, if he's going to miss, that's the time to miss because right. he only lost one pin to, you know, his deficit. He's 23 right. back. <sighs> this is where Tommy Jones can either seal the deal or let him right, right back, back in the yeah, match. Exactly. And as a bowler, it scares the heck out of us. <laughs> <laughs> Give yourself a little yeah. breathing room, so to speak. That's a sigh of relief, isn't yeah. it? He was. He took care of business. He did, every, did what he had to do. Yeah, that all but wraps it up. And you have to go open, open on a right. house shot. Uh, not very likely. Not likely, yes. I'm not going to give him the victory just yet. But I can tell you this. Belmonte's not very comfortable sitting down right now. Beginning of this match, that the first mistake was probably going to be uh, the yeah. person that lost the match. Well that's said. That's what we said, and, and it turned out to be the case. That did turn out to be yeah, the case. Absolutely. We didn't know that Jason was going to miss more than once, but he mm. missed first. It's just such a costly miss, yeah, and that door was open. They give all credit to Tommy Jones because he stepped right up and took full advantage of it. Didn't give him an opportunity. Yeah, but he gave it the who's got next at the end. Hey, look, I'm the Dallas Strikers manager, and that's where that came up. And I just love him when he gets fired up. Tommy Jones being my anchor man with the Dallas Strikers. <laughs> who's got next? That means have a safe travels back to Australia, my buddy. And he hasn't changed an expression since he started. And again, the yeah. left lane comes yeah. back right. to wow. Mike Belmonte. This, this was, uh, was a problem all night. He wasn't able to figure out that left lane. Norm, is it a case of once it gets in your head, it's hard to just, just shake it off? You would think so, but I think what it is is the bowling ball that he's selected. You know, he hasn't had you know, a full day even uh, to decide what is best. Uh, I think maybe uh, a different bowling ball will get in the pins a little better. Uh, maybe he's trying yeah. to help it get into those pins, and as soon as you try to help it, you yeah, know, Jerome's going to no hook chance. early. That's right. Uh, whatever it was, he, he did.
did not put up the score he knew he needed on a house condition against Tommy Jones. That'll strike. Yeah, there he is. It sure Thank will. You, Thank you. It's hard to put into words, though, how good that man has yeah. been the last 10 years. Uh, I've watched it firsthand from the front row, and I've never seen anything like it. Uh, he's just amazing, and all of us know it. We want to do something about it so bad That's I right. can't tell you, but. Mm. So it'll be Tommy Jones moving on to the final and the opportunity to walk away from Jupiter, Florida with $100,000. Guys, we said it before, we talk about the accolades of just how good Jason Belmonte is, but when he gave that opening, a lesser bowler might not have taken advantage of it and let Jason stick around, and he did not. And, and we just talked about Tommy Jones going into the Pro Bowling right. Hall of Fame. So this is the, this is the caliber and you that say Jason lesser Belmonte, bowler? exactly, <laughs> Jamel is dealing with. This, this guy is a Hall of Fame bowler. He's going to take advantage of the opportunity. So, Jerome, what you're saying is and who's, this is... who's got next? Who's got next? <laughs> who's got next? Is this like winning the Super Bowl before you get inducted to camp? It is, you know, and, and it, it's certain... It's certain bowlers that this you action. bowl against. I know it's a little slower than you young punks. <laughs> <laughs> it's Don't certain, worry, I still get you know, excited. it's like in football. It's certain teams that you play against that you say, you know what? We want to beat them, right? And it, it doesn't matter. And this is one of those situations. you got Jason Belmonte, the, yeah. you know, the best bowler on the Fair planet enough. right now. This is the opportunity he wanted. Well, no question, and Tommy will give it to you. I mean, he just said, I, right. I don't pick my hair out with this one or another. That's, right. That's right. And look, he's talking to that front row right, right. there because the average age of that again, front row is probably 21, 22. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and like I said earlier, it's all about the next match, the right? The next match. And, 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 and two That's right. And letting those guys, putting those guys on notice. On notice. Like, when you come see me, you better have your best. As we take a look at the brackets on the pros' side, it is now Tommy Jones who has punched his ticket into the final and the opportunity to win $100,000. He will face off against the winner of our next matchup. It'll either be Garrett Chauvin or Luis Gonzalez. Right now, Layla Rahimi is standing by with a very jubilant Tommy Jones. Fresh off of that outstanding semifinal match. You told me you'd watch this on TV before. Now you're going up to face one of the big amateurs. Could be Garrett Chauvin, could be Luis Gonzalez. You know what's on the line. What do you think of the atmosphere and all of this so far? Uh, yeah, so far the fans are great. They're, you know, they're keeping, you know, keeping us up, keeping the energy up. It's an awesome, awesome atmosphere. Valero has been great with all they've done. And, uh, you know, I look forward to bowling one of the amateurs for 100,000. In your outstanding career, only one time have you had a $100,000 check. What would that opportunity mean to you? Well, you know, here we're not bowling for the prestige, we're bowling for the money. So <laughs> there's no secrets about it. So it's all about the money and, uh, you know, it'll, it'll make Christmas a lot better. Well, the show is great too. Good luck to you in the final. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Layla. And congratulations to Tommy Jones once again as he takes down Jason Belmonte and he has moved himself into the final where he will face off against the number one amateur which is coming up next. Still to come though, the big battle in the Sunshine State. We're not talking about the Miami Hurricanes. We're talking about the bus and the Duke going toe to toe. But when we return, we go inside the arcade. Oh, the two-handed, yeah. Arcade action with Kyle Troop. New Year's Day, the NHL heads outdoors for Wild West Showdown as the Nashville Predators head to Dallas to face off with the stars from the Cotton Bowl. The 2020 NHL Bridgestone Winter Classic, New Year's Day, only on NBC. Beautiful day in the Sunshine State, but if you're going to be indoors, why not go ahead and take advantage of all the arcade games that are possible? And who better to guide you through it than Kyle Troop? So after you bowl, it's time to play all the games in Bolero's Deluxe Arcade. You can discover the newest and coolest games, challenge your friends, and have the best time ever. Find the location near you and learn more at Bolero.com. His hair not included. All right, Tommy Jones is already into the final. Our next match, we'll find out who he'll be facing. These are the amateurs. We've got Luis Gonzalez taking on Garrett Chauvin. Let's first talk about Luis 
Gonzalez, he has been there before. Uh, he has, and he won $270,000 earlier on in the year. And I'll tell you what, if that doesn't loosen that swing up, I'll put in with you. This has <laughs> got to be the most confident player in the building, counting the pros. And what do you tell Garrett Chauvin coming to this one? You know what, he's a clear underdog. He has to know it. He knows that, you know, Luis has been in this environment. He's won against the pros. So he's at a, he's he's playing on, on, on house money, so to speak. So he, so Garrett has to come out here, have some early success, put pressure back on Luis. All right, let's take a moment and meet Garrett Chauvin. My father uh, and grandfather were both in the Air Force. My grandfather is the one who started all this for us. He got my dad into bowling when he was three. Now my dad passing it down to me. It's just, it, it's been awesome. It's a family thing for sure. My proudest bowling moment was uh, bowling um, 300 in front of my dad in high school league. Being able to do that for my dad was, was awesome. It's been uh, just an amazing relationship for us to have that. And we, we text all the time, all these little things. When, whenever I found out uh, about the Blair League Series, you know, I, I sent him uh, all the stuff I could. He was ecstatic. If I were to win this event, um, it's going to be it's going to be a, a roller coaster of emotions for sure. Um, we'll probably cry a little bit. <laughs> but that's because of our love for it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your Bolero Elite Series League Bowlers. Up first, a former collegiate standout from Saginaw Valley State. He owns a 228 scoring average from Denver, Colorado, Garrett Schuvan. Garrett Chauvin has made his way to the amateur semifinal, and he will face off against Luis Gonzalez, a man we know well in the Bolero Elite Series since he won the very first event. The experience in their first event was surreal, like actually facing off against a pro, like it's just something you, you kind of dream about. At the end of the day, it's just you and the pins, like you control how you get in. Unbelievable. The attention I receive after winning the first event, um, it's, it's overwhelming. A few people come up to me like, hey, like, you're the guy that won the tournament, or you were on TV. And I'm like, yeah. We couldn't reveal any results until the show aired. When I did go back to work, walking in, like everybody's looking at me like, so how did it go? And I'm like, ah, you know, I can't really tell. But after everything was done, like, it was just an awesome feeling, like just like doing it for them, just because they expected so much out of me. This time around, I was a little more just anxious to be able to come out here again and compete. Once the lights turned on, like it kind of hit me a little bit more like, okay, like opportunities here again, like make it worth it. Up next, the pharmacy technician who took home the inaugural Bolero Elite Series Championship in his hometown of Chicago. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Luis Gonzalez. Coming up next, it'll be the amateur final. Luis Gonzalez and Garrett Chauvin for the right to face off against Tommy Jones at $100,000. Had a great week of competition here in Jupiter, Florida, and congratulations to all the amateurs that were here participating. Although we are down to the final two, six others were here, and I'll tell you what, they had an opportunity to take advantage of Bolero's six pound behemoth burger and the two foot mega dog. Jerome Bettis calls that an appetizer. Try them today with friends or order them for your next party. See the full menu at bolero.com. And the rest of the amateurs are sticking around to see how this whole plays out. Right now, we sit it down to Layla Rahimi. And we are with the two amateurs who are left, and I'm going to start with the contender. Garrett Chauvin, you talked about balancing your nerves in the rounds before this. So what goes through your mind as you get ready to take on a guy who proved himself on the biggest stage Bolero had? Yeah, he's, uh, he's undefeated through two events so far, so uh, I'm going to have to work for it. And uh, uh, there basically can't be any nerves. I'm just got to do it. Smile on your face, you've got the good approach so far. As for Luis Gonzalez, what a whirlwind it has been for you since you took this in Chicago. How do you defend your title knowing that you've got some of the best facing you? Uh, just keep to my plan, make good shots, and hopefully if I make 10 good ones, come out with the win. 
He says you have ice in his veins. Garrett, we see it here right now. Todd. Thank you, Layla. And remember, $100,000 to the winner, $25,000 to our runner-up. All right, so Norm Duke, Jerome Bettis, you guys have seen the pros, what they could do. Tommy Jones sits and waits. One thing you guys noticed, these guys were warming up for a long time, Norm. Did they warm up too much? Well, that's what Jerome was asking me is, Norm, how much is too <laughs> yeah. much? I said, that much? That's <laughs> that too, much. too much. Absolutely I was. thought so. But you know what? These guys have a lot of energy. Yep. Come on, Louis! Come on, Louis! Yeah, Louis oh, man. Talk about picking up where he left off in Absolutely. Chicago. Absolutely. And I'll tell you what that does. You know, to his opponent now, who's already thinking, okay, I've got to do some damage. I've got to beat this guy. When you go out there and roll that initial strike now, it puts a lot of pressure on you to have to go out there and get it done. So this is Garrett Chauvin from Denver, Colorado, former collegiate bowler at Saginaw Valley State. Split his time growing up between... Dallas and Omaha, Nebraska. And a big opportunity for him right here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And Norm, it's awfully yeah. cliche to take it one frame at a time, but really you have to just think about the 10 in front of you and nothing else. It's, it's so cliche to say it, but yeah. okay. that's exactly it's, what we do. And you know, for, for Garrett right now, the best thing that he could do is take a lead Right after watching a guy that's seemingly unbeatable throw a perfect shot at you, if you can have a lead after two frames, maybe even that's even. Right. Yeah, that's right. Like you said, you gotta Jerome, start early. Gotta start, start fast early. and put pressure back on Luis Gonzalez. Push, 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 push. Oh, oh and he got some good pin action there he to help did. him out. He did. Talk that one through. Hey. Mm. He came in there a little tight there, and he still got the action that, that he wanted. He did, and you know what? I think he got away with both shots. The first one, he was a little light. didn't yeah. look like he caught it all, but right. he recovered late. That one, he said, push, push means hold. Oh, Don't go yeah, through the nose. Oh, it did. Come on, Louis. Come on, Louis. Oh, yeah. Garrett did exactly what we had to do is put the pressure back on Luis Gonzalez, and Luis answered right away. His wife, Elisa, has made the trip down to Jupiter, and why not? Get out of Chicago during the winter and come Absolutely. to Florida. And Logan, the, the son who's peeking out of those shoulders. I understand he's a bowler as well. Come on, Louis, get it up there, baby. Well, that's why. Oh. oh, boy. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. He looks, uh, <laughs> looks like he's going to be hard to beat. <laughs> he. Yeah, this reaction. She knew it. Yeah. Oh, it's a confident bunch, I'll tell you that. They are. And they ought to be confident. So now the pressure goes back to Garrett Chauvin. Get it. Yeah. I tell you, Norm, he may not be hitting the pocket exactly every time, but somehow he's getting the pin action. It's, it's clean enough. Yeah, that was his best shot of the three. That, yes, it yeah. was. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I think what Jerome said about uh, our pros match is right now it might be the first, the first one who mistake. misses. Psh, could be out of it. But Garrett is doing exactly what he has to do. Put pressure on early. Keep it up. Yeah, he's breathing. And it seems as though those first two uh, strikes were a little bit um, out of the pocket, and I think he's found his stroke. The last two shots have been in the pocket, really nice throws. Yeah, he got away with the first two, so he kind of calmed him down, yeah. and now he can yeah. say, all right, now make your shot. Right. Yeah. 
So, guys, we talked about that left lane being an issue when we watched the uh, pros go, Tommy Jones versus Jason Belmonte. Are you seeing any issues for the left lane so far for the amateurs? None. They're both left-handed, and both of the other players were right-handed, so it has no bearing. Oh, Harry. Good shot. Harry. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Hey, we can see a 300 here. Very much. Very Two, much. Three. Come on. Two 300. It's only the fourth frame, but I'll tell you what, they both are lined up. They both throw it really good. Yeah. That's right. And I'll tell you what, neither looks rattled. And it's it's really impressive. Luis has been, he's been, I mean, if maybe a board or so off, maybe, but, but this pin action is so much that he's he's clearing it out. Luis Gonzalez has been bowling since the age of three. And he honors his father who passed away by continuing that now, as you pointed out, his son Logan. The four year old, yeah. third generation bowler. That's so awesome. If you're going to win the kind of money daddy's winning, you might as well. That's right. It's the greatest right. thing about bowling. Is it, it doesn't matter how old you are, or it your gender. It doesn't. Let's go bowling. As soon as he let go of it, he said, it's got to push. Yeah, you can even hear the ball hit the lane. It was a lot louder when it impacted the lane that time, which means he just got it into a little too steep into the floor. Yeah. Yeah. When you do that, it tends to hook early if there is hook early. He'll forgive himself. He'll make the spare and move on. And here's the thing, if he loses to Luis Gonzalez and Gonzalez throws a 300, you know, right. what are you going to do? It's, it's kind of like you've got to tip your hat to yeah, him exactly. and, and just tell him, hey, great, great game. That's all you can do. kind of regain yourself in this time. Yeah, I can hear his heartbeat yeah, right now. He's trying calm to. Calm himself down, calm himself back down. He's trying to gather himself, exactly. With each strike, you tend to just amp up the level of. Uh, that tension. That tension, yes. Let's go, Push. Oh. And again, makes the yeah. same comment and leaves one Darn. standing. Yeah, and, and it just seems as though he, you know, he's, he can't find his his stroke. You know, earlier he threw a couple, that was off. He found it a little bit, but now he's kind of searching right now, and, and this is the wrong person to be searching against. Luis Gonzalez look, looks like um, Luis, <laughs> he's in, in, in he hasn't missed form. since July, so. <laughs> and he cleans it up. So there you see the max scores right now. Gonzalez still on track for a 300, 268 for Garrett Chauvin. When we return, Luis Gonzalez back up and bowling. When we return to Jupiter, Florida, this is the Bolero Elite Series. So if I'm able to win the Bolero Elite Series, it would mean the world to me. It's an amazing opportunity for us league bowlers, guys that are watching the pros on TV. Um, it's amazing. My main goal for this event is to still honor my dad. I know he's watching down on me. I'm still trying to make him proud. Uh, but also for my son, like just to make sure I keep here, you know, try to make everybody proud and do what I can. If I'm able to win $100,000, I mean, that is, uh, it's life-changing amount of money for sure. So yeah, I can do some things that I wanted to do that I couldn't like trying out the tour and, and bowling some bigger events um, and seeing you know my ability out against the best in the world. As far as money wise like I don't really look at that too much it's more of just uh, prove it to myself that I can be out here competing against the best amateurs and the best pros. We had eight great amateur bowlers that made their way to Jupiter, Florida, but one of them really stood out to us, and that's Mike Ewing, and he has a tremendous story about being the best he can be as a father. 
I have a beautiful nine-year-old daughter. She is blind and autistic, so being a single dad of a special needs little one is always having to overcome something every day. There's a lot of things that we went through with Kylie as far as different sports, uh, with gymnastics was one of them, taekwondo. Everything motor function wise, there was so much going on that she couldn't really focus. This past summer actually is when I got back into bowling and she was right there with me side by side. She just loves to throw things in general. So the fact that I could put an eight pound ball in her hand and just put up the bumpers and say, hey, rip it up kiddo. She bowled two strikes in a row last week, so I was I was over the moon about that. Now her motor functions are unbelievably great. Uh, core strength has gotten better. I'm, it's pretty cool to see her progression and really focus um, both physically and mentally on it. Seeing the achievements that that she did pushes me to do everything that I possibly can that much better. My message to parents with with children with disabilities is to keep pushing them as much as possible. Don't give up on them. Don't put the disability out there as far as taking it for what it is. Constantly push them because they will surprise you every day and those achievements are going to be so awesome. And there is Mike Ewing here in attendance for the Bolero Elite Series watching his fellow amateurs go head to head in this one. Luis Gonzalez taking on Garrett Chauvin for an opportunity to face off with Tommy Jones in the final and that $100,000 payout. So there's a situation right now. Luis Gonzalez in control of this one. And Norm Duke, this is a great opportunity for him to really apply the pressure to Chauvin. No doubt, but fresh off a of commercial. Get up, get up, baby! Oh. 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 All right, come on, hey. That's the third time I've done that today, Jerome. Absolutely, and it's something about Look coming out of a commercial break. Uh, mm. Wow, that, uh, you know. Folks ask me all the time, well, what is it? What is it about that? Well, we don't know. Well, it takes you out of your rhythm. Exactly. You know, you're not in that rhythm. You kind of, you're thinking of other things, and, and you kind of lose that loose focus. And as you know, in this in this sport, if you lose focus for just that that little bit, it's going to produce a bad role. Right. You can come back to it mentally, but can you remember all the things that you were doing to create the reaction you need? Absolutely. And Absolutely. Then you, yeah, it just it's a hard shot to throw. He didn't get a good break there either with the 710. I mean, that could have struck easily. All right, Louis, come on. Come on, Louis. Hit it. Oh, wow. All right, come on, right, come on Lou. Elisa Gonzalez, yeah. Louis' wife. And there was the opportunity that he had, Norm and Jerome, and unable to capitalize on it. So still life for Garrett Chauvin. He's got to feel pretty good about the way things have played out here in the last five minutes for his opportunity. You know, this was the opportunity that he was looking yeah. for. He needed uh, Luis Gonzalez to Open to really frame or give spare, him that yeah. opportunity. Now it's up to him to take advantage of it. Yeah, he took the lead on the bench. Oh. Come on, hey, come on. Wow. Right. The first chink okay. in the armor that I've seen yeah. uh, out of Luis Gonzalez. Uh, he had a masterful performance his last time on the series, and the, to see this happening, uh, quite shocking. Oh, Calmly steps up and yeah. hits. That was it. That's impressive. That was impressive. That's how you turn the match around. Hmm. Yeah, he takes a 13-pin lead. With the strike here, it goes to 23. Wow. And like you said, five minutes ago, yeah. we were trying to figure out how he was going to stay in the match with Luis. Get up, get up, get up. Oh, 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 oh. He is the pin whisperer here in Jupiter, Florida. He says it and it does it. I need to talk to my ball more often if it gets in that deal. That's right. That's the third time he said either get up or push and they respond. 
All right, so Jerome Bettis, if you're coaching up Luis Gonzalez right now, he's sitting there on the bench. What do you tell him when he comes back I'm in? I'm telling him you got to stay focused. There's an opportunity here, but you have to do your job. Come on, Louis. Come on, Louis. Hey. There it is. You've got to do your job because you got to remember, Gary showed that he just had a strike, but it was not a, a, a solid throw. So you know that, hey, he's still trying to find himself. So you got to go out there and do your job, put pressure back. Norm, you heard Gary. that, right? A Pittsburgh Steeler quoting Bill Belichick and the Patriots, <laughs> do your job. <laughs> You can steal some things every now and then. I'm not going to say they do. <laughs> Looking to get the mojo back and just leaves one. If you ever needed one, the oh. that was, she needed that one. Yeah, that was a big Boy, shot. I thought he was. threw it pretty good. Yeah, gave it did. some room. Look at the action. Got in there a little tight. Though. Right? Mmm. Uh, hey, make the spare. That's right. why you're in yeah. this trouble right now. Not only did you leave a 7-10, but you missed a single pin spare. Get it. Yeah. Can't afford that yeah. open frame. Cannot afford that. Hey, now you need help. All right. Well, so Garrett Chauvin, just he's, he's, step up and do what? Do your job. <laughs> Close it out. Close it out. Sometimes that's the hardest thing to do, though, isn't it? Well, look, if he gets two right now, it is over. It won't make it to the 10th frame. Anything less than that, and we have some action. Right now, Garrett Chauvin, he's on a 238 clip. Luis Gonzalez sitting at 225. Two biggest shots of his career. Oh, absolutely. Oh. Oh. Okay, so Luis Gonzalez is now breathing just a little bit better. Just a little bit easier. There is, there is life. Well, 225 is the most that Luis can get. A spare here and a mark in the 10th frame, and he's in the 230, so we're all right. He still has two pins count, so, you know, a nine miss, we might have possibility of a tie. Trump said it. Do your job. There you go. Do your job. Do your job. Keep it simple, and Chauvin does just that. He puts himself in position to close it out. Right. Big shot in his mind. He wants nine or better. He cannot lose with nine or better. Go, go. Oh. Wow. That's three nine pins in a row. Unbelievable. These boys like the drama, don't they? <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't think he, either of those last three balls oh, deserves look a nine at that. Pin. But, but, you know, there's a psychological game as well because you got to remember, Gary Chauvin, he's, he's looking at the opportunity to play against Tommy Jones. And you want to send a message to your competitor, hey, right. this is what's coming. And so you don't do that. Now you leave that thought in mind and says, okay, well, he's not going to be as tough as he could be. Right, right. His armor isn't quite exactly. as steely, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah, exactly. So well, you, every opportunity you, you, you get, you have to send a message yeah. to those competitors that are watching you play, especially this is not the finals. So he has another match. You want to send that message to your competitor, hey, be ready for me. And there's Tommy Jones down at the other end of the lanes. A solitary. That's right. Throwing a few. Garrett Chauvin against Tommy Jones in the finale. Tom, Tom what, do you, what do you think about that as we take a look at it one more time? Great action there as Chauvin comes back. Guys, halfway through this match, we were talking about Luis Gonzalez maybe going to 300. That's and Chauvin, right. hey, you did well. You made it this far. And look how he's turned the table. What a game. I would classify it as an upset. I really would. Because you go yeah, and, and, and Luis right. Gonzalez, the way he was yeah. playing, this, the form this. he had, uh, this is definitely an upset. Yeah. 
you know, two two seven tens in a match. It's hard to win a one game match with a seven ten in it. Right. Two seven tens in it pretty much takes you out. If you no miss chance. a spare in there, That's you're right. gone. You got, you got no chance. Yeah, but I tell you what, off his hand, he threw eleven really good shots. Yeah, he did. He had a tickler seven ten, a pocket seven ten, a blower seven pin, and a stone yeah. nine. There you go. So the final is set. It will be Garrett Chauvin taking on the pro Tommy Jones for one hundred thousand dollars. One thing for certain, both men are leaving with some money because the runner-up gets 25 grand as we take a look at the brackets here for the amateurs. Garrett Chauvin, Tommy Jones, they're gonna meet in the final for 100 grand. What a showdown it'll be. And we'll see if Garrett Chauvin can get that hot streak going yet again. He will face that man, Tommy Jones, the 41-year-old from Simpsonville, South Carolina, getting set to be inducted in the PBA Hall of Fame. It'll be a classic showdown here in Jupiter, Florida. Speaking of classic showdowns, have we got one for you. When we return to the Bolero Elite Series, it's the bus. He's got all the hardware, but does he have the skills to take down the Duke? We'll find out when we return here on NBC Sports. because I was scared to eat. Jerome Bettis knows a thing or two about football, food, and bowling, but he's going to go head-to-head -head with PBA Hall of Famer Norm Duke. So I hope he carbo-loaded for this one because this is going to be a tough matchup as we send it over to PA announcer Mark Fratto. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here in Bolero, Jupiter, Florida, it's time for a special holiday exhibition of five-frame bowl-off between two Hall of Famers. Let's meet first the former first-round draft pick out of Notre Dame from the Professional Football Hall of Fame, the NFL seventh all-time rushing leader and the bowler of one perfect game, Jerome the Bus Bennett! And now, ladies and gentlemen, his opponent needs no introduction here at Bolero. He's a PBA Hall of Famer, the owner of five SVs, 40 Hello. career PBA tour titles, seven career majors, one of the top five PBA bowlers of all time, Woo. the great no. So it's the Duke versus the bus. And Jerome Bettis will have the first honors. He was looking good in warm ups. Oh, that's how you start it off. That's how you start it off. He said he came to play today, guys. Throwing up that iron curtain offense right there is what that is. <laughs> Hall of Fame start right there. No pressure on Norm now. Very, very sweaty. <laughs> Norm Duke. <laughs> he answers right back. That's a pretty good answer right there. Oh my God. <laughs> I'd be a little nervous. You know, Jerome, a little intimidating on the lanes. They're being awfully nice to each other in this first frame. I was, expect I was expecting more trash talk, especially from Norm Duke. Come on. I mean, I would be <laughs> nice to him, too. I, I can't really blame him. Oh, oh someone's feeling the Christmas spirit. A little swagger step from Jerome right there. Get a little action, a little action. Get a little, Get a little action. Jerome Bettis goes about 6'3", 245. <laughs> That's how much one of his leg wears. Norm Duke weighs about... 5'3", 127. One of, one of Jerome's arms. Oh. 
Does does Norm do uh, travel with his entourage? Hold on. Hey. It's probably a pretty big entourage, now. I would have to say. Hold on, that's 129 now, because I just grew on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so let's break down the attack. We're talking about a power game with a bus, aren't we? Oh, this is raw power right here from the bus. Oh, help him. Ah. Oh. Help him. Almost too much power. Whew, a little too tight. How's he only leave the six pin with that? Because <sighs> he's a bus. He's a bus. The bus ran over the mother three he's supposed to leave. <sighs> oh, yeah. Bus comes out sniping, gets it. So pick up for the bus. It's a big spot for Norm here. Let's see if he can uh, handle the pressure, take the lead. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the Norm Duke fist pump right there. Don't that, leave me hanging, Michael. That's a pro move right there. So he applies the pressure to the bus. Now he's got to answer back. Oh. Ah, foundation Let's frame. see what you got, Jerome. Hook. Oh! Didn't come out. Right. I'll put it out there. You think Norm's oh. getting in Jerome's head? He might be. I mean, he Norm's a little guy, but he can, he can, he can be intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> Notice how a bowling ball in the hand right. looks like a tennis ball in everyone else's hand? Yeah, he could probably add some weight to the ball. Oh, that's oh. Oh. You know he was sandbagging us, telling us he hadn't bowled in months. Yeah, two months off, enjoying his offseason a little bit. Prime hasn't form. bowled in months. We are in the 10th frame. I want him to feel you over there. <laughs> I think it's time to crack out some Irish magic. What do you think? Irish magic. <laughs> Come on, boss. Come on, baby. <laughs> I forgot to bring my Norm Duke jersey. You didn't know I had all that in me, did you? Oh my goodness, uh -huh. you saved that. You hey. should have been doing that uh, this week. You remember the last time we bowled? When you bowled 299 at me and beat me? Don't, you think I, I don't remember that stuff? It's punishment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm making sure you don't roll a 300. Ah. I am making sure of that. Good shot. Here we go. All right. I smell a comeback. I needed that. I needed that. Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> Last Ooh. frames right here. Jerome, no pressure. Oh, yes. The big finish for the bus. <laughs> Man. Not enough. Oh. And Norm Duke stepping up to the plate and right takes there. down the bus. Great win, great win. That was a great time. Oh. Thank you up there. Let's hear it for our two Hall of Famers. <laughs> New Year's Eve is just days away, but there's still time to plan an amazing party at Bolero. Celebrate on your own reserved lane with party packages featuring unlimited bowling and Bolero's signature menu. Book now at bolero.com slash NYE. This is the third stop of the Bolero Elite Series, but at stop number two in North Brunswick, Amy Brem put on a show. Amy Brem now looking for something big and gets it. Trust yourself and trust your shot. Yes, look at that. Tough break for Amy. 
And here she is, the coolest school teacher in New Jersey. Amy Brem has made the trip to Florida. Happy holidays to you. Take us back to that second Bolero Elite Series stop. How much pressure were you feeling? Uh, not a lot of pressure. You know, it was an experience of a lifetime, and I just let it all out there. Did you surprise yourself on how well you bowled at that tournament? I absolutely did. But I think the biggest thing that I could take away from it was the amount of confidence that I had. And the biggest question, what was the reaction from your class after it was on TV? The kids absolutely <laughs> loved it. They came up to me the next morning and they're like, Miss Brand, we watched you on TV and they were showing me videos and it was, it was just a great feeling. Also joined by professional Kyle Troop. Kyle, you've been a part of the Bolero Elite Series. What's your take on this format? What do you think? It's been such a great experience all throughout the whole year. Uh, big shout out to Bolero. You know, they've done a great job sponsoring the event. Um, it's great, you know, it's bringing the amateurs and pros together, getting to see the talent from the amateurs that you might not get to see on TV. And uh, it's, it's great, and there's lots of money too. We love money. <laughs> all right, the time has come. We are set to go. When we come back, the final from Jupiter, Florida. Will it be Garrett Chauvin, or will it be Tommy Jones leaving the Sunshine State with $100,000? Wintertime in South Florida as we welcome you back to Jupiter, Florida for the Bolero Elite Series, the third and final stop of 2019 and not a snowflake in sight. We're getting set for our championship matchup, but first we want to remind you that next Saturday, the nation's best high school football players go head to head in the 20th edition of the All-American Bowl. It's a game that launched the NFL All-Pros such as Adrian Peterson, Andrew Luck, Ezekiel Elliott, Odell Beckham Jr., and collegiate stars like Tua Tagovailoa, Trevor Lawrence, and Chase Young. It all starts at 1 p.m. on NBC Sports as we check in now with Layla Rahimi. Todd, thank you. Now I am with Garrett Chauvin. And Garrett, you did what you needed to do. You took down the defending amateur champ in Luis Gonzalez. You're going to face a guy who's getting inducted into the Hall of Fame in January. So how do you approach mentally? What's going on? Um, I, I grew up watching Tommy Bowles, so uh, this is just awesome, no matter what happens here. So, um, so like you said, I'm going to go out there and try and throw good shots. Um, I'm not going to let the nerves get to me because this is, this is amazing. So you know, we, we made it, right? So uh, do what we can do to get that 100 grand. You had said that your proudest moment prior to maybe this was pulling a 300 in front of your father. So how do you rank this opportunity? Uh, it, it's above that a little bit, but you know, there's some sentimental value with the, with the pops there. But um, yeah, this is just amazing and, and I, I, I'm not going to take it for granted. Just going to enjoy this. Gary, good luck to you with 100,000 on the line. Once again, we'll hear from Mark Prado. And now, from Jupiter, Florida, USA, it's the Bolero Elite Series Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, it's go time! Introducing first our Bolero League Bowler, the former collegiate standout from Saginaw Valley State. He reaches the championship with a 236 from Denver, Colorado, Gary So Garrett Chauvin is out and ready to go. Right now, let's send it backstage to Layla Rahimi. Todd, thank you. Standing by with the future Hall of Famer. So as you get ready for that, this is your final match. Before you get inducted, a nice feather in your cap to get that $100,000 prize. I know it's on your mind, so how do you approach what's next? Well, you, you know, all you can do is go out there and make good shots. Um, you know, he just pulled a very good game to advance to bowl against me. So. I bowled a good game in the semifinal also, so we're going to go out there and see what happens and uh, hopefully make our, a happy new year with $100,000. Yeah, you've watched these on TV. You're familiar with Luis Gonzalez. Now Garrett does what he does in order to advance. What did you think of just the wherewithal and the momentum he had to get to face you? Yeah, you know, they're, uh, they're not quite as scared as amateurs as, as some of us were when we were bowling as amateurs. We didn't have much, uh, many opportunities to bowl for $100,000. Um, so we'll see what happens. Hopefully, uh, hopefully the nerves get to him, but he, he bowled a really good game, so I'm not sure that's going to be the case. It's going to be fun to watch. Tommy, thank you. Good luck. And now the 19-time PBA Tour champion and soon-to-be PBA Hall of Famer. He reached the championship with a 279 from Simpsonville, South Carolina, Tommy Jones. So the final is...
this set, it'll be Gary Chauvin out of Denver, Colorado, taking on Simpsonville, South Carolina's Tommy Jones for $100,000 here on NBC Sports. Looking back on the first two events of the Bolero Elite Series here in 2019, we go back to Chicago, the first stop, and what a showing it was for one Luis Gonzalez, as Gonzalez came out as the amateur and took down touring pro Kyle Troop. And then in September, North Brunswick, New Jersey, Anthony Simonson gets the win over the runner-up, the amateur, Amy Bram. So, an amateur has won one, a pro has won one. So we are down to the rubber match here as we have reached the final here in Jupiter, Florida. And let's not forget there's $100,000 on the line to the winner of this match, $25,000 to the runner-up. So either way, someone's going to start off 2020 in a nice way, financially speaking. <laughs> They're ready to go. comes out and firing just like the way he finished when he took down yeah. Jason Belmonte in the semifinals. And, and again, uh, Garrett Chauvin, he's a huge underdog. Right. What he has to do right now is get on the board early. 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 Put pressure back on the Hall of Famer. You right. got to do it. Yeah, you can't allow Tommy Jones to step up in the second, third frame and That's take right. a 25 pin lead. No way. No can't way. Do it. There it is. And let's not forget the six-figure payout if that's right. the way to take right. down Tommy Jones. That was a great, a great moment to regroup, get yourself back together. It was a smart move, out. wasn't it? Absolutely. Not everyone would do it. Yeah. Yeah. Some mm -hmm. of us would have just thrown the shot and that's try right. to make a better shot in frame two. He stopped, regathered, and I tell you what, he threw it perfect. He did. He did. I can feel his heartbeat. It's <laughs> good. Oh. oh, thank you. <laughs> so the Garrett, I love you call right when he released did yeah. not help him here. And he said thank you after, so he heard it. <laughs> yeah, he heard it. He was clear. <laughs> To take it. Acknowledging the fan. Well, the good news is he didn't leave the 6A, just the 8 pin. So if it makes the spare, then, you know, Tommy has a chance to go up by 20, but that's not, you know, a given. There you go. Yeah. Cleans it up nicely. Yeah. And apparently she still doesn't love him. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Jones now steps up. As Layla reported, he'll be inducted in the Pro Bowlers Hall of Fame in a few weeks. 19 PBA titles, two majors. Yeah, first ballot and deserving. 2001 PBA Rookie of the Year. That was a little while ago. <laughs> now at 41, he's a seasoned vet. He's no Norm Duke yet, but he's a seasoned vet. <laughs> And he's not the player you want no. to leave the door open with. You he know, he's need, he guy, need the door. Yeah, you've got to put pressure because he's going to kick down the door uh, regardless. Yeah, this was not his best shot. In fact, he needed this ball to lay off. Thanks, Otherwise, Tom. it could have been right Ooh. in the middle for the big four. But nope, he played there. He's got a double. Come on, better than that one. He needs to take advantage of, of that big break that he got. Oh, he likes that. Yeah. As soon as it left his hand, he liked that. Well, when you give a pro a break like he got in the second frame, it will relax. And tell you what, the, the third right. frame is the easiest shot yeah. you've thrown because you just got away with murder and you got a free shot at a turkey. And if you heard him in the interviews, he spoke about 
the nervousness he hoped that mm -hmm. the competitor, the amateur, would have. So now you, you make the mistake early. Now he's more relaxed saying, hey, just all I got to do is just throw it out there and I'll be fine. He, he's taking the pressure off of himself. Get. Oh. Yeah. Too many singles left standing spills. Bad news when you're facing off against Tommy Jones. Yeah, but the good thing here is he threw it wide. He could have been looking at a 379 just as easily as that three pin by itself. Hey, a spare here. He's technically only 21 pins down. So, you know, that's the difference in, you know, a, a, yeah. a solid nine or ring and 10 in between strikes. And, and the, if there is a silver lining, is that it's early in the match. Early so in the match. He still has a chance to recover. Good call. He's got to get greedy here, not yeah. be settling for 25 right. grand. He's got to be thinking, right. I want that right. $100,000 payout. Jerome, you know you'd be thinking about that 100K, don't no you think? No doubt about it. That's, <laughs> a, you know, that's the only thing you're it's thinking about. It's the only about. thing, right? That's it. That's it. That's the goal. But uh, obviously there's pride goes right. along with you beating a professional. Oh, no question. You, know, you got to think that you know, right, that's but a it's feather in your cap, but you're thinking – Cash, please. Yeah, but it's not a five dollar match against the pro or pride. You can <laughs> it's you not a that. guarantee no, it's that not it that. mattered. That's right. Let's see if he can settle down now, put a strike up on the board, start a stream. That's exactly what he did. That's what he needed to do. That'll settle the nerves a bit. Until Tommy Jones strolls up there. Well, you, you've got to you got to show Tommy Jones you're going to be in the match if you go out there and you don't put those strikes on the board. Now he's saying, "Hey, I can just go out there and and uh, just throw it without any pressure." Yeah. You want to keep that pressure on him. something, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he absolutely loved that He's one. He's feeling it. He's feeling it. He is one of the best bowlers on the planet, yeah. bowling from the lead. I've watched it. That's why he's <laughs> on my Dallas Strikers. Not to mention he can throw it, you know, in the 10th frame. But when he gets a lead, it's tough to be. Boy, you got to have some help from him. You know, you almost right. have to have yeah, you need bad break. breaks to happen You need a break. Him. And Jason Belmonte didn't get that in the semifinals, yeah, did right. he? He didn't. And I would suspect that uh, Garrett probably won't get that here as well. But like you said, Jerome, he's got to be within striking distance. If he does get that one, he'll right. be able to walk right through. That's right. Okay. Break. That's the break. That well, this is exactly what happened in that needed. amateur semifinal. Is Luis Gonzalez left the door open, and that's right. Garrett Chauvin showed that he could deliver. Right, save for the commercial break, which you know may have caused the last. Yes. I just said he was one of the best with the lead ever. The North that's Duke right. Jinx. What he, do I know? He just got duped. <laughs> he got duped. Wow. <laughs> Got a shot. Oh! oh wow! Oh, oh, oh. Wow! Happy New Year, Tommy Jones! Oh my goodness. Tommy Jones may have left the door open momentarily, but he comes up with this shot and slams it shut on Garrett Chauvin. Much more of the Bolero Elite Series after this. This telecast and its contents are owned and copyrighted by Bolero Corp and is broadcast for the exclusive private use of our audience. Any other reproduction, retransmission, or use is prohibited. Bolero and its affiliated marks are exclusively owned by Bolero. And our thanks to the VIPs in attendance, including CEO Bolero Corp, Tom Shannon.
And none other than Coley Edison, the president of the Elite Series, for making this all possible. We also can't forget Carissa Del Bene and her incredible team who have helped us put together this broadcast. All right, speaking of heavy hitters, now time for the amateur Garrett Chauvin to show what he is made of. He has got to step up here and really try, I mean, say try and keep pace with the pro in Tommy Jones. Yeah, right now he's down by 28, but he's got the hammer up. So with two strikes here, he can pull it within eight pins. I think that this is a critical moment in the match where he has to show his hand. Commercial break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just seemed like he just he threw that when it, it had no life in it at the end. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he did. He turned it early, just a little bit, and then yeah. it kind of fell off his hand where he had turn, but no lift. Yeah. That's no hook. That skid the whole way. That's why we're looking at a bucket. The only good thing about this is he's on a strike, and so he doesn't lose count yet. Right. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. He's talking yeah, to it again. The pin yeah. whisper. <laughs> the pin whisper. Here is Chauvin. Just maybe that's a good thing. He had to have that. <laughs> because the last time he started talking to it, he started to come it alive. He every he time, did He started to come alive. And it was listening. The ball was reacting to it. Right now, he's feeling some serious pressure, some serious tension. We're talking Jerome Bettis against Norm Duke pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get duped. Don't want to get duped. <laughs> yeah. Much there better. Is. Much there better is. action. There he is. Talk about the pop he had on that one, Jerome. It looked good from the minute it left his hand. It did. He, he had it right in the slot. He did everything he had to do there. I mean, it was a must-strike uh, situation that he was in. It really is a must-strike for yep. him uh, for the rest of the way out. Tommy Jones plus 28 pins. Fresh off that huge split mm. conversion. Settled in nicely. No commercial jinx there. And just like the Hall of Famer that he is, he goes out, he takes advantage of the spare, and puts a strike right behind. That was about as pure as the driven snow. <laughs> and you're not going to find a lot of that in Jupiter, Florida. No, that's right. Needless to say, he's taking his time. He puts that thumb in and then rotates his whole hand clockwise in order to get it fixated in that thing. He loves it. No, it's a walk in the park. Yeah. Yep. And a message to the amateur as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what that message is? Who's up next? Who's up next? Who's up next? He's doing his job. <laughs> That's right. $100,000 on the line to the winner of this match. $25,000 to the runner-up. We've had one amateur win in Luis Gonzalez in Chicago. In New Jersey, it was Anthony Simonson, the touring pro, that got the win. Who will add their name to the third and final stop here in the Bolero Elite Series in 2019? Oh, right now. Doing his job, trying to keep pace. He's still trying to keep pace. Well, you know, if he strikes out, he's at 249. Well, Tommy Jones at that point would need two more strikes on the string or a spare, and he'd have to go off the sheet. So we still have game if he yeah, can strike right. out. The key is here, he's got to chain up some strikes. He's got to go out there and put some strikes yeah. on the board. I mean, just, it's one of the worst breaks in bowling. He threw, 
He threw his haymaker down there, and it was so flush in the pocket, nothing could stand, nothing. Yeah. It's bowling. See the pin action across the face of that pin and then behind it, and somehow left standing. Wow. Huge break for Tommy Jones. Absolutely terrible for Garrett Chauvin. Yeah, when you're, it out. Yeah, when you're, when you're Garrett, you're saying to yourself, it's just not my night. When you, when, when you, you hit it solid in the pocket like that. Yeah. And you get about you get, the same uh, score in a frame as Tommy does when he has that seven count and exactly. makes the spare. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah, you said, yeah. may not be my night. You get so frustrated. But you, you got to put it out of your mind, make the best shot you can. That's right. You got to make Tommy show up. Belmo, and he's doing it here against Garrett Chauvin. That was the silent assassin right there. You know, he's on the right lane, so he knows he has to throw another shot. I think, yeah. though, mm. at this point in the, in the match, we're talking about 240 clip to 2 0. What is that, 39? Garrett, 39? Garrett yeah. has to have help from, from Tommy yeah. at this point. I'm talking two opens, not just help. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. <laughs> it yeah. After the reaction on that last strike, and, you can yeah, see that. On a house was, pattern as well. Oh, man. Yeah. He's still going to dig deep. I don't care. He knows. Any kind of relaxation, that's where you get the open opens. Good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's feeling it now. That's a $100,000 scream right there. Not only is hundred thousand that he gets to take like that. Look at this. It's just yeah! form has yeah, not changed that's right. since he got here. Now it's victory walk in the tenth frame. You know, there's just nothing. Ah, that's the best feeling in bowling. That's right. Of course, start talking about Garrett Chauvin and yeah. the performance he had just to make it to this point, guys. And I know his aspirations are to get on the. Pro tour and, and do that. Norm, as a, as a touring pro yourself, what advice would you give him now as he goes away from this? $25,000 richer. Yeah, keep it up. But yeah. Keep it up. If you want to play on the tour and some of that $25,000, maybe you can invest in your career, uh, either mm -hmm. in, in uh, massive practice, maybe equipment, whatever it is, maybe more tournaments, like he mentioned in the opening. What I would tell him, Push. what I would tell him is use this experience. Use this moment to motivate you through the process because it's a long process. Uh, to think that you can go and just be a pro, that's not the case. You've got to put a lot of hard work and dedication into it. But use this moment, right, and that feeling of that loss. Yeah. Let that drive you through, and now you know where you need to be in order to be a touring pro. Yes, but same on both sides. He needs to use his experience in this event for the good things he did Absolutely. to get yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. No then question. also the That's final right. match. That's right. Because unlike most sports, this is an individual sport, and your head is a, a big part of the process, yeah. right? And so if you can utilize this opportunity to motivate you mentally, mm -hmm. right? Because it's gonna be some tough days ahead in terms of getting to where he needs to get. But if you can use this as that energy, that momentum, now that maybe that pushes you to the place where now you can go out and be the pro on the other side. Couldn't have said it better, Trump. Now he is just you know, this strikes for mom and dad. Aww. There it is. Does he have the stuff? Norm, does he have the stuff to be a, pro, a touring pro? Well, I mean, everyone has the stuff to be a touring pro if you rise to that occasion, if you invest 
in your craft. Look, uh, I'll never tell somebody they can't do anything because that's what I'm listening for. One time, tell me I can't. That's right. A you know, sign of respect here as they send him off. I tell you what, he's been a delight. Yeah. The whole week has been a delight. Great story. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah. That's right. That's no, right. thank you, Gary. Thank you. And a great showing by Garrett Chauvin out of Denver, Colorado. Bold at Saginaw Valley State University. No need to be quiet now. The party's just now and, and, got destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Jones is ringleading now. Is. But I, I was, you know why? Because it's $100,000 richer. richer. No question. <laughs> the party has begun. That's what he said. The party has begun, Party people. of DJs. Let's find out if the drinks are on him. Oh, DJ, we're going to Sizzler. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm close enough to know that when Tommy wins, that drinks are on him. The drinks are uh, on yeah, him. Yeah, no okay. doubt about it. <laughs> so he bowled two games today. He averaged 272. <laughs> That's not terrible. I guess that's why he's going into the Hall of Fame in that's January, right. right? That's right. He's going to modify this one. And still oh, gets it done. Good. Thanks for that. The winner of the third and final Bolero Elite Series goes to none other than Tommy Jones, the 41-year-old from Bolero. Simpsonville, South Carolina. He's $100,000 richer. I'll be home soon. Have a happy new year, everybody. This is the Bolero Elite Series. Tommy Jones takes the final title of 2019. Welcome back to Jupiter, Florida, and NBC Sports coverage of the Bolero Elite Series, where moments ago it was Tommy Jones taking home the $100,000 prize. He's now standing by with Leela. Have a happy new year, everybody. Todd, thank you with our winner of the third Bolero Elite Series, the future Hall of Famer. In January, Tommy Jones taking him $100,000. And here joining us, the president of Bolero Corp, Tom Shannon, and Coley Edison, the CEO of the Elite Series, presenting you with the hardware. There you go. Congratulations. Great job. Thank you very much. Thanks for everybody. Thanks for everything you do for this part of life. Pleasure. We'll Tommy, I know this check feels good to hold. It's something that was on your mind. For the second time in your illustrious career, you're taking home a six-figure purse today. Yeah, I, I can't think enough to uh, Bolero Corporation, the things that they've done with the Elite Series, um, their involvement with the PBA, which is where I make my living. Uh, you know, can't thank them enough. They've been great. Uh, the fans here at Jupiter, uh, Bolero Jupiter, they've been awesome all day. Um, had a great time. And uh, looking home to get some, have a happy new year with my friends with uh, $100,000. What does it mean to you to get this right before you're going to be inducted into that Hall of Fame? Well, there's a, there's been a, a, a lot of victories over the time to get to the Hall of Fame, but uh, anytime you get $100,000, it's, uh, it's pretty special. So, you know, it'll probably sink in sometime on the plane tomorrow, but uh, right now we're just going to enjoy it and hang out with some friends. We heard your emotion during the match. And your enjoyment of the crowd will let you enjoy it now. Congratulations, Tommy. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Todd. All right, I've been joined by a few of my best friends here in the Bolero Elite Series, and what a week it has been here in Jupiter, Florida. Norm Duke, you joined us here for this third and final event. Your thoughts on the Bolero Elite Series and what transpired tonight? What a culmination of the 2019 Bolero, Bolero Elite Series. In fact, uh, it's bowling that is winning the most. We're on a roll. We're, we've got the momentum. And thanks to Bolero for their purchase of the PBA for this series, everything. I love it. Nice. Well, it, it just says that, you know, bowling is in great hands. And, uh, you know, Bolero, what they've been able to do in terms of creating the prize money uh, that these uh, bowlers have been able to play for, that's one thing that's amazing. But also to see where, where bowling is going, uh, that's another thing. And I think we're, bowling is in great hands. 
Well, that puts a wrap on the Bolero Elite Series 2019. Who knows what's in store in 2020? On behalf of Layla Rahimi, Norm Duke, the bus Jerome Bettis, I'm Todd Harris, and all of our friends saying Happy New Year, everyone. We'll see you next year. For more of the Bolero Elite Series, we say good night from Jupiter, Florida. Thank <laughs> you.